you don't need to train more often. As a natural, you need to train less often, more intensely, but less often. As a natural, you don't have that super recovery ability that the drug using counterparts have. If you did, you would train every single day. Hi, I'm John Hart, and welcome back to Mr. America Hart. High intensity training versus high volume training. Which one is best for you? Let me go over quickly which type of high intensity training am I talking about. Specifically, there were three men in the last 40 or 50 years that come to my mind who influenced training in a great way and brought it to the lower end of volume, but also with a much greater intensity. And that was Arthur Jones, the creator of Nautilus Equipment. Mike Menser, the creator of the heavy duty high intensity training system. And then Dorian Yates, six time Mr. Olympia. He trained in a high intensity fashion. And out of all three men, he trained more often than the first two. So what sort of a range of training are we talking about? Anywhere from one to four times per week and doing anywhere from one to two sets per exercise. How many exercises per body part? Now there is a variation between all three men. We can say simply anywhere from one to three or four exercises per body part. So we're looking at a max of four training days per week, a minimum of one training day per week, but on average between all three men we're talking about oh, two to three workouts per week. Now that's of a higher intensity nature where you're going for it giving your best effort right out the gate after you're done warming up. That's high intensity training. So we'll, given my definition of it today, right? Let's just take it over here. High volume training, on the other hand, is the type of training that is the most popular used throughout the world and also for the last century even. Arnold Schwarzenegger really popularized it back in the 19, early 1970s when he was Mr. Olympia by training six days per week. And this is standard to this day. A lot of people train six days per week. They do three to five sets per exercise, three to five exercises per body part. Bigger body parts, more exercises. Smaller body parts, less exercises. So that's high volume training. And when you do have to do five sets of an exercise, in fact, it's impossible for you to go all out on that very first set of that exercise because you know subconsciously that you have four more to go. So when you're doing high volume training, this is understood. There's no disputing it. If you, it's like a sprinter versus a marathon runner, right? A marathon runner knows they have to hold on to, preserve a certain amount of energy to make it through 26 miles. A sprinter, 100 yards, that's it. 100 meters, that's it. That's all they're gonna do. So they pull the trigger right away and unleash with everything they had. They can't sus uh, sustain that effort over the course of 26 miles. You can't sprint 26 miles. So that's just an extreme example of what I'm talking about here. High intensity training, brief and of a higher intensity nature. High volume training involves more sets per exercise, more exercises per body part, more training days per week. And when we do that, that's going to use more resources, more time, and there will be more wear and tear on the joints. So that being the case, it's, it's inarguable, right? I just stated the three big reasons why high intensity training may in fact be a better option. Now, are some of you out there, are some people going to be more interested in competitive bodybuilding? Are they going to use certain bodybuilding drugs to help stimulate the growth of more muscle on their body, increase protein synthesis. It allows them to train more often when that is the case. Or let's not even say they're going to compete. Just they're using bodybuilding drugs. It increases protein synthesis. It's a fact. It, incre it decreases the amount of time between workouts that you can recover and grow in a much shortened amount of time. Well, when those chemicals are being used, they're powerful, it's undeniable, and therefore you can train more often. Does it mean that there's still 
less wear and tear on the joints? No, there's still wear and tear on the joints. Does it mean that there's, you know, you're still using a, a massive amount of time out of your week? You're still using a lot of resources, except those drugs assist in the recovery and ultimately in the growth of the muscles. So I'm not talking about, however, those who choose to use. I am talking about mainly the majority of the people who are watching this that are not using any sort of anabolics, growth hormones, IGF-1s, all of the bodybuilding type drugs. Those of you who are not using it, the obvious, it should be obvious, that high intensity training uses less time, resources, and has less wear and tear on your joints, yet it stimulates the growth of your muscle tissue as a natural. You don't need to train more often. As a natural, you need to train less often, more intensely, but less often. As a natural, you don't have that super recovery ability that the drug using counterparts have. If you did, you would train every single day. Thank you for watching this video and all of my videos. Please take the time to subscribe and like and give me your comments below. I love hearing them. Thank you.